So I spoke on a panel today about culture and leadership and how we can drive change to more effectively integrate ESG or responsible investment into mainstream investing. So we were talking about things, you know, like what, what's important in making sure that an organisation really buys in to um, the idea that environmental, social and governance issues add value to the investment process. And so there were a few ideas that people had, um, including that the importance of uh, leadership from the top. Um, it's pretty hard to, um, I, I think it's really difficult to be the lone practitioner in an organisation who's trying to drive this, because essentially what you're trying to do is influence people to change the way they do their job. And we had a panel that was very diverse in, its, um, from it, in terms of its geographical coverage. So we had an American and uh, someone from uh, a, a Swiss national and me from Australia and um, a, a Philippe from Erapf in um, Paris. So not only very geographically diverse, but also very diverse in terms of uh, views and perspectives and the context that they operate in. So that was interesting. You are from Australia. Is the Australian point of view so different from the others, or are others so different? So I think there are differences in different markets. And in Australia, for example, there is a really strong focus on ESG as a mainstream investment proposition. We don't have the history of SRI that uh, some of the European countries have had. We've always just kind of been very straight on our investment, and now we're trying to, uh, I guess, integrate ESG into that investment process. The US is different again, I think, because they have um, probably a really big diversity of different views. Such a big country, so many different investors and different types of investors. Um, so it is interesting to hear the way different people are thinking about the different issues. Uh, the Australian point of view, is it got something to do with the maybe harsh circumstances in climate that Australia is facing for the last year? Well, you, would, you, you might have thought that the harsh climate in Australia would lead us to be uh, really at the forefront on climate change initiatives. And indeed, investors are looking very closely at climate change and doing a lot of work in that area. But unfortunately, from a policy perspective, a public policy perspective, um, climate change has not been very much on the agenda in Australia. We're hoping that'll change soon because it's going to need to change if we're going to meet the obligations that we've all signed up to at Paris. Do you think um, that, will, that will change or you just hope for it? Well, I think it will have to change because our government has made commitments and the current, um, the, the current uh, processes in place to get to those commitments is not going to get us to those commitments. We wouldn't meet the commitments under the current regime. But for now, there is not really a, a strict policy. That's correct. So we don't have carbon pricing, for example, um, and we don't have a huge amount of regulation around carbon emissions. So I think that will change inevitably over the next few years. And investors are really lobbying for more certainty uh, from a regulation perspective so that they know what's coming towards them so that they can plan for it. But investors are also trying to play a constructive role in making sure that uh, you know, infrastructure and uh, clean energy are going to be investable in the future.